gonna share my screen. This, I admit, we have another, we have another friend. Okay. Well, good afternoon. Good evening, <laughs> wherever you are, um, whatever time it is. Thank you for taking the time to learn about how to cope with anxiety. Uh, this is a topic that is near and dear to my heart as someone who lives with PTSD. Um, I often that shows up as anxiety for me. So when I was creating this, I did, of course, I um, referenced some really, really wonderful sources like Cam H and a few others, but I also really pulled from my own experience and what has helped me and hopefully out of the many options, we'll find stuff that will help all of you cope with anxiety during this very, very, um, you know, trying period of your life. So welcome. Thank you so much again. My name's Hannah. If you have not met me before, I am a divine healer, a spiritual reader, a life coach, and a yoga teacher. But I'm also a chronic disease warrior. And so as a chronic disease warrior, I felt a lot of the times, and I still often feel that I am not being supported on my mental health journey. And I really wasn't taught proper self-care techniques uh, or practices throughout all of this. And so that really was a detriment to my overall well-being. So creating this program, being able to work with all of you amazing women is allowing me to do for others what I didn't have for myself, which is a dream come true, honestly. So thank you so much for being here. So we're gonna begin with a sound bowl meditation because I really just want you to get centered, get grounded. Maybe you just finished work. Maybe you've had a really stressful, busy day. Just want you to come back to your body and come back to the present moment. So just as you are, if it feels comfortable, I invite you to close your eyes. And if closing your eyes doesn't feel comfortable today, you can simply just bring them to a soft gaze, staring right in front of your nose. Just begin to focus on your breath. Focusing on your inhales, and your exhales and how they feel in your body in this present moment. On your inhale, your belly will naturally expand. And on the exhale, the belly gently contracts. Doing your best to focus on this deep belly breathing to signal to the body and the central nervous system that you are safe and that you can come into this moment with a little bit more ease. As you breathe here, really allow yourself to connect within, focusing on your breath, using your breath as an anchor and if any thoughts, emotions, feelings arise, I invite you to place them on a cloud in your mind's eye and simply watch that cloud float away. Again, your breath is your anchor and you're allowed to release anything that is not serving you with each exhale. So I invite you to allow your next five breaths to be soothing, breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. Be audible on those exhales in through the nose. Let it go, three more on your own. <sighs> know that you are so supported to be in this space to learn to receive 
showing up with compassion and grace for all that you've been through and all that you're going through. You are all warriors. And bringing your hands over your heart, your left hand first and then your right over your left. And taking a few breaths into your heart space. Sending gratitude to yourself for showing up. And then whenever you're ready, you can gently wiggle the fingers, wiggle the toes, and slowly blink the eyes back open if they were closed. Coming back into the space, maybe have a sip of water or tea, coffee, whatever you're drinking. Maybe wiggle it out. <laughs> but anyways, I hope that helped you get grounded and centered. So today, this session is all about coping with anxiety. So what is anxiety? Well, anxiety is our innate response to stress. It often is the fear of what is to come. We can feel anxious about something that we are anticipating in the future, such as maybe the first round of chemo, a surgery, medical procedures, doctor's appointments. These are just a few areas where we often feel anxiety. And some symptoms of anxiety, they really can manifest in the body and the mind. So this can show up as feeling very nervous, restless, or feeling tense within the body. Sometimes we have increased heart rate or heart palpitations. Our breathing increases. We tend to breathe from our chest as opposed to from our, from our bellies. We sweat a lot. Maybe we tremble. Maybe we feel weak or tired like we're going to faint. Maybe we can't even concentrate because of this present worry, right? So I know for me, I've experienced all of those things when I've been feeling anxious. And it's a really beautiful thing that our bodies can communicate with us, right? And so this is actually an opportunity for you to listen to your body, to see, okay, I'm anxious. Okay, how can I start to relieve some of the anxiety? And that's what we're gonna do today. But of course, we have to be able to identify when we are feeling anxious. So coping with anxiety, we really need to accept that some anxiety and fear is normal. Living with cancer can be overwhelming. It's a, there's a lot of uncertainty. So this really does add to the levels of anxiety and this is normal. I really want to own in on how normal this is, right? These are, you often are experiencing rational fears, not irrational, not psychological, real fears. So having acceptance around that is that blanket of compassion allowing you to know that yes i'm going to experience this sometimes but it doesn't have to be all consuming it's really important to seek credible information when you're going through a journey like this whether it is cancer or it's chronic illness or maybe even covid right to help relieve feelings of anxiety, it is really imperative that we seek these credible sources. That means checking in with your doctors, your specialists, and other health practitioners before making changes or decisions about your treatment. You know what's best for your body, but it's still really important that you check with your team, right? They're there to help you. They're there to support you. It's also important to avoid unfamiliar websites or online discussion groups where information from non-credible sources are often shared. So this is often, you know, on social media, like I mentioned, be really wary about you, what's posted on social media. Always check the articles that you read, check the sources, right? And if you don't know how to um, properly check sources, ask someone in your life because they probably do. This is really important because on your journey, you wanna make sure that you're getting the right information to help you. If you don't, we could only, we sometimes this, it just adds to our levels of anxiety, right? So again, really important that you are constantly checking in with your doctors, your practitioners. And again, you will know what's best for you. Honor that, honor that intuition and that voice. But still remember, you have to seek that credible information. It's going to be so important to help support you. 
This one is one of my favorites for helping cope with anxiety. It's being intentional about unplugging on a daily basis. Okay, so feelings of anxiety are super heightened um, when we're being overstimulated and we are living in, an, um, you know, in environments that are constantly stimulating us, specifically by our electronics. So that's your computer, your phone, your tablet, your television, all of those things, right? When we unplug intentionally, it allows us to disconnect from social media, which I truly believe is a detox for your spirit, or maybe we like to say a mini retreat for the soul. So I like to say, so it's really important when you're doing, when you're unplugging from your technology, from social media, that you're doing something healthy for yourself. Maybe go for a walk, read your favorite book, cook your favorite meal, meditate, do yoga, um, you know, check in with a loved one, schedule a, a socially distanced walk. There's so many things that you can do that de don't involve having a screen in front of you. So the reason I mentioned daily is it's important that you schedule this time for yourself and hold yourself accountable, right? But again, if you don't unplug every day at first, that is so normal. It does take so much time. It takes practice, right? But soon enough, the more you practice it, the more it becomes habitual, right? It becomes like a habit, something you just do. You will enjoy these moments of your day when you allow yourself to unplug and truly live in the moment, right? And it also improves, there's so many other things that improves. And unplugging is great because it improves our ability to be in the present moment, right? When we truly live in the present moment, we are shutting down those anxious voices. Those, what, what we often feel when anxiety shows up about worrying about the future or sometimes really focusing on the past. It improves our sleep. It supports a deeper connection with ourselves and others. It increases our productivity and encourages less dependence on electronics, okay? And so I like to just like take this a step further sometimes. And when I'm unplugging, I connect with my inner child. I connect with the things that used to light me up as a kid because they still light me up as an adult. We all have that little us inside, right? And that little you is longing to be nurtured and to have fun and play. So maybe that's what you do when you... On, sorry, when you intentionally unplug, you give yourself the space for your inner child to play. And we just went into Leo season, my friends. So this is the perfect time. Another really great thing that um, unplugging helps us with is again, like living in the present moment and being so intentional. So something I like to do is actually calendar block <laughs> on my Google calendar when I'm going to be unplugging because that's how I hold myself accountable, right? Can't just, for me, I can't just say, oh yeah, I'll unplug from two to three and do it. No, I have to put that in and then I hold myself accountable. And then it's like, I look forward to that moment when I can unplug. It's really important to remember that you are resilient. Challenge those what ifs. Our stress around the what ifs can cause us to think of the worst case scenarios for the situations that we are in. It is these stressful situations that often cause us to underestimate our ability to realize how well we can cope, no matter what is happening in our lives. You are resilient and you, are more, you have more coping skills than you realize. It's important to remind yourself that you can handle stress and this anxiety because you have in the past, right? Maybe it's not exactly how the situation was, but you've handled something similar in the past, you can do it again. And if you're feeling so overwhelmed, this is the time when you reach out to family, to friends, to coworkers, peers, professionals for support. So seek out support. <laughs> You know, just because we are living in this global pandemic doesn't mean that you can't stay connected with your loved ones. When we spend too much time alone, it increases feelings of anxiety and stress. And so connecting with those who are positive influences when you're feeling stressed is so beneficial. It brings you back up, right? So connect through phone calls, text, video chat, social distance walks, or the people in your bubble that you can see and hang out with. And then if that is just not enough for you and that's okay, seek out formal support. 
maybe a distress line, maybe an online support group, maybe resources in your community, such as a church or other types of groups that meet together. Reach out to a therapist, a healer, a shaman, a psychic, whoever, whatever you resonate with. There's so much support out there for us. There's so many resources. And it's really important, and I know this isn't always easy, but to try not to engage with those who are constantly negative when talking about your current situation, because this is just going to increase the anxiety and stress that you're feeling, right? You want someone who's going to be positive, who's going to make you laugh and bring you back to the moments. Of course, we have to, sorry, those positive moments of your life, but like, of course, there's going to be times when we have to talk about these things we're going through these situations, right? But what I mean here is that there's some people in our lives sometimes that just constantly go to the negative. And it's important to create a boundary around those people so they're not affecting you on an energetic level, a mental level, an emotional level. The next one is practicing meditation. So meditation is a wonderful way to practice relaxing. Um, meditation is proven to reduce feelings of anxiety. And there's so many types of meditation. It is definitely not a one size fits all. And that's the beauty. I love it for that reason. Because formal practices of meditation include, you know, like seated meditation. You often see people sitting like, you know, om. <laughs> um, there's mindfulness meditations, which are similar to guided meditations. And then yoga is also considered a form of meditation. So we also can follow meditations through by guided audio, video, or through written word. Sometimes we have books that have meditations that we follow along, maybe YouTube channels, uh, maybe you download some guided audio ones. There's so many options. But like the thing that I want you, if you can take away anything from this, is that meditation is whatever you want it to be. Okay. It can be achieved through any activity that you find enjoyable and relaxing. Maybe when you're cooking, you're in a meditative flow. Maybe when you're gardening or walking in nature or swimming right there's so many times especially for me those those four things for me are totally meditative states and i just find it to be so beautiful and it's really nice too to be intentional okay when you are going to do these things so i'll tell myself as i cook dinner this is going to be meditative right and and i allow myself to be you know mesmerized by the smells and the sounds the sizzles on the pan, right? Or the smells that I'm cooking and then the taste once I'm eating it. It can become such a beautiful way to practice being present as well. So I say there, it is important to choose an activity that works for you and brings you joy. Start slowly. And before you know it, it'll be integrating into your everyday life. Again, we need to go slow. We need to take baby steps, okay? Because especially when you're going through the journeys that all of you women are, are there's so many options of what you can do, what new diets, treatments, medication, and change. There's so much change. So you have to be so compassionate and patient with yourself as you're starting to adopt these new practices, right? And sometimes it's best to just start with one. You know, I'm going to send you all the resource, which will have all this information and you'll have the recording as well. So it's up, it's up to you to find out what works best for you. Start there, start with one, and then add slowly. Let's see if this will close, sorry, there we go. Okay, practice healthy sleep hygiene. This is probably one of my favorite things to talk about besides boundaries, um, because proper sleep hygiene is so important to have um, if you are looking to have a restful sleep, honestly. Like, there's no, there's no way around it. This includes but is not limited to being consistent and removing electronics from your bedroom and avoiding having large meals or caffeine before bed, okay? I mean, honestly, it's not easy, but it's really, really helpful. Um, you can improve your sleep hygiene by being consistent with the following. So your skincare routine, what time you go to bed, the room lighting and the temperature. So my suggestion, this is a practice that has helped me so much, is putting my phone on airplane mode as soon as I start my nighttime toolkit, and I'll get into what that could be, and I keep it on until after I've completed my morning routine, okay? And this allows me to unplug intentionally, first of all, and hit, you know, I'm getting two birds with one stone, and also practice healthy sleep hygiene. So it is, no, it is proven and known that our electronics, the light that they emit, 
really is a detriment to helping us sleep. So if you're going to do anything, one of my suggestions would be to not have any electronics uh, or not look at any electronics about 30 minutes before bed. Okay. If you can do longer, great, but at least give yourself that 30 minutes because that also gives you an opportunity to do your skincare, <laughs> to brush your teeth. Maybe you like get some stuff ready for the morning. So you don't have to worry. You don't have to be in a rush. And then always making sure your room temperature and lighting is um, the same. Sorry, I've been talking so much. I need a sip of my tea. Okay. <laughs> so I do mention this, avoid stressful activities before bed, such as doing work or discussing emotional issues. I'm sure a lot of us can relate that if you do work right before bed, it's really hard for your mind to shut off. What do I have to do tomorrow? Did I finish this? Did I email this person? Did I talk to that person? <laughs> you know, and we don't want that. We don't need to think about that. Our work days are done. Let it go as well as discussing emotional issues, because again, your nervous system will be heightened and it's just going to have a harder time relaxing. And so like I write here, <laughs> these physical and psychological inducing activities can cause a lot of extra cortisol, the stress hormone to heighten. And that really increases um, our alertness. Again, we don't want to be alert when we're going to bed. So some nighttime toolkit. I said nighttime toolkit. You're like, what, what, what is that? Is this beautiful opportunity for you to just like create what are different things that would help you before bed, help you sleep, help you unplug, help you unwind. Okay. So for me, I just have a little list in my phone. Okay. Or it's actually in my Google calendar, which I can access through my phone. And it says the different things that I would do before bed that help me unwind. So besides brushing my teeth, washing my face, doing the regular things on in my nighttime toolkit, I've included bedtime yoga. So doing like a 10, 15 minute little sequence before bed. And of course I um, shared the first session we we ever did for this um, wonderful mental health and wellness program was a yin yoga perfect for before bed. So that was emailed earlier out, but I will, I will email it out again um, with the recording of this session. So you can add it to your nighttime toolkit. Maybe journaling before bed. That's something that I like to do reflecting on my day. I like to say, you know, three things that I appreciated about my day, three things I accomplished and then what I was grateful for. Okay. Maybe reading, taking a, a bubble bath, taking a warm shower, going for a really short walk. There's so many things you can do that will help you have the best sleeps ever. Practice healthy eating. So it is proven that, healthy, that eating healthy helps us feel better and improves our overall health and well-being, okay? When we are feeling anxious, and I know this happens for me, we often might not feel hungry or we will binge out on our comfort foods. Oh, excuse me, sorry. And again, like I'm not saying don't enjoy your comfort foods because I am all about my comfort foods, my friends, but everything in moderation, right? Like if you're noticing that you're constantly eating processed food, junk food, um, pre-made meals a lot because they're easier or it's just, that opportunity for you not to think about food. It's a sign and call from your body that you that it needs some rich nutrients. So the best way to start is to just be drinking lots of water, 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 drink as much water as you can and try to choose to fill your plate with mainly fruits and veggies. And in the resource, I, I have included three really yummy recipes. Practice self-compassion. It's be really, really important to be kind to yourselves. Rome wasn't built in a day and these practices really do take time to integrate, right? We need to practice them in order to make them habitual in our lives. So try not to be hard on yourself if you forget to do something or if you aren't feeling up to it because we're all allowed to have bad days, right? I can't, there's times where I just go from working straight to bed it happens. <laughs> it's not always the best, but it happens, you know, and all of this is a practice, right? Coping with anxiety is a practice. And that's something that I really hope that you remember on this journey. So you can be compassionate with yourself. Okay, so we're going to do an exercise now. I just have to stop sharing my screen for a second. Sorry, my friends. 
We are going to do an exercise called the present moment awareness. Here we go. So this is something that an exercise, and again, you'll have this recording so you can come back to this at any time, um, for you to use when you're, you catch your thoughts going towards the future, so causing anxiety or going towards the past. And in a way that is really making you feel uncomfortable, insecure, or anxious, okay? So the more we practice catching our thoughts, catching ourselves, and bringing our awareness to the present moment, the easier it will get and the earlier you'll be able to catch yourself before you spiral into these anxious thoughts, okay? So again, we just wanna start by becoming aware of this moment. So I always like to close my eyes doing this kind of thing and I really suggest that you close your eyes as well because it brings you back to your body in the present. So again, closing your eyes if that feels safe right now. And if it doesn't feel safe, just bring them to a soft gaze in front of your nose. And begin to focus on your breath, your inhales and your exhales. Notice your body in this moment. Notice what parts of your body are touching the earth, even if they're on a couch or chair, still connected with the earth. Feeling your feet on the ground. Just noticing your entire body in this moment and how it feels. And then noticing your breath, your inhales and your exhales. And just taking a moment to appreciate your lungs and your heart for all that they do for you. Notice any warm tingling sensations you might be feeling in your hands or your feet. Really feel the life in your whole body. Notice the sounds around you. Appreciate how your ears interpret the vibration and allow you to experience your environment. If your eyes were closed, I invite you to gently blink them open and just notice the room that you're in, the space, taking it in, feeling how the empty space allows the objects to be there. Begin to notice the light around you and where it's coming from. And then bringing both your hands over your heart, left and then right. And ask yourself, what feels right in this moment? What feels beautiful in this moment? And what do I appreciate in this moment? Just taking a few deep breaths into your heart space, letting these answers come to you. And then just letting that go and know that you can use that practice anytime you need so that you can come back to your mind with control and ask yourself, what would I prefer to think about instead? Or is there a different way I can look at this situation that I feel better about it? Also a really beautiful time after you do something like this to practice your affirmations or your mantras, okay? So I hope that helps you relax even more and um, it's a really beautiful practice to, to try. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen again. Okay, so we're gonna do some journaling. It, not very much, but a little bit. So if you have a journal around or maybe just a pen and paper, again, this will be in the resource that I'm sending you all. So if you don't feel like answering right now, you can always do this another time. But it's important that we think of a difficult or challenging situation that we've encountered in the past that we were able to manage. 
even if things were not perfect, what did you do to cope with the situation? Okay, this is an exercise to remind you how resilient you are, right? You have everything in you to get through this. And so I wanted to include this prompt as a way to help you remember that. And I know there's only um, three of us, so if um, anyone feels comfortable sharing their answer after, you can just unmute yourself and share. But obviously there's absolutely no pressure to do so. Oh, I didn't know I could make it go that way. Interesting, sorry, I'm trying to move this and I'm finding out new things about Zoom. There we go. <laughs> I can share mine. Thank you, Abby. Uh, the three ones, the three main affirmations that I always, always rely on is I am strong, I am powerful, and I am fearless. Oh, I love that one. I got goosebumps. Thank you. If I could add one more, I would actually add um, I am healing. Yeah, yeah. I love that. And we don't just need three. We can say as many affirmations as we want. <laughs> what, I, what I rely on is usually I am healing, I am resilient, and I am grateful. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you, Maria. I am grateful. That is one that I, I like earlier today, I was just dancing around the kitchen, just saying that, singing that, <laughs> singing how grateful I am for life. So thank you for sharing. And the other one, the other question is a bit of a longer question. So, you know, take your time to answer that um, whenever you feel comfortable. And I know that there isn't very many of us. So my, I mean, these, all the affirmations I shared here are all ones that I say to myself. One of my favorites is I inhale love and peace and I exhale tension and stress, stress, sorry. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna end now with the self-love meditation. So I will stop sharing my screen again. And this meditation is about just under 10 minutes. So. If you want to lie down for it, you're more than welcome. Just do whatever feels best for you right now. And as you situate yourself, maybe do some wiggles, <laughs> make yourself extra comfy. If you're lying down, maybe place a pillow underneath your knees. Just help your low back relax, your belly, your pelvis. And then whenever you're ready, again, if it feels safe, you can close your eyes. And begin to bring your awareness to your breath. Your inhales and your exhales. Feeling them flow through your body like water down a stream. I invite you to begin to notice where your breath is in your body. If your breath is sitting in your chest, do your best to send it to your belly or your diaphragm. And as you breathe in, feel the breath travel through your belly, your ribs, your chest and collarbones. And as you exhale, feel the breath travel back down through your collarbones, chest, ribs and belly. Taking three more breaths just like this on your own, noticing the sensations in your body as you bring in these full, fresh breaths of life. Today's meditation focuses on self-love because in the words of RuPaul, if you can't love yourself, how in the hell are you gonna love somebody else? I am here to guide and assist you with opening your heart space through your breath. 
By breathing deeply, you are telling your body to rest, relax, and rejuvenate. This is self-love in the simplest form. You can do this at any time, any day, so you can continue to love and accept yourself for the divine being that you are. In a society of instant gratification, we all fall victim to negative self-talk. Whether we don't get as many likes on an Instagram photo as we had anticipated, or we didn't lose as many pounds as we had planned with our new diet. Whatever your negative self-talk is, it is only inhibiting you from opening your heart space to the love that you deserve. So today, we are going to work on quieting that voice that tells us that we are not enough or that we don't deserve love. Bringing your attention back to your breath. Where is your breath sitting? Are you continuing with the deep belly breathing or did your breath make its way back to your chest? Either one is neither right nor wrong. Our breath travels through our body constantly. So it's only natural that it may get stuck in some areas. If your breath did make its way back to your chest, I invite you to question why this may have happened. Was it because I mentioned negative self-talk? Did your shame voice creep in? I am asking because we can come back to these deep belly breaths during these moments. Our shame voice, which is our fears, anxieties, worries, doubts, tends to quiet down when we shift our awareness back to our breath and the present moment. Continuing to breathe and on your next inhale, acknowledge your shame voice. And as you exhale, begin to let your shame voice go. You may not be able to release it all, but I assure you, you will release a little. Breathing in, feeling your breath expand through your entire body, bringing you courage, strength, and resilience. And breathing out, releasing your fears, anxieties, worries, and doubts. Again, breathing in, feeling the courage, strength, and resilience enter your body. Breathing out, recognizing that this is a familiar feeling. You have been here before. Whether a specific memory comes to mind or this is something that resonates in your daily life, breathe it into your mind's eye. Know that this is love. You are showing yourself love when you speak your mind, stand up for yourself, accomplish your goals or dreams, or pull yourself out of a dark place mentally. Self-love is whenever you show up for you with wholesome, good intentions. Take your next three breaths to fully breathe into this feeling of self-love. Breathing in, beginning to flood your mind with all of the things you love about yourself. Breathing out and letting that love, sorry, letting that flood spill out, releasing any feeling of the notion that you are not worthy of love. You are worthy of love and love is worthy of you. Letting your breath be your guide and connecting your heart and your mind with love. Inhaling, feeling this love envelop you like a bright light, starting in the pit of your belly and expanding through the top of your head, the tips of your fingers, your entire body. Exhaling and letting the light of love radiate inside, feeling it tingling from the inside out. Remembering that this feeling of love is within you always. Loving ourselves is a practice. Like meditation, we must practice self-love through positive self-talk. Expanding the wonderful things about ourselves and challenging the negative thoughts as soon as they arise. 
So hear yourself saying the following with conviction in your mind. When I love myself unconditionally, I am able to show that same love to others. I am committing to loving myself today. I allow this love for myself to grow each and every day. I am worthy of this feeling and the joys that come with it. No matter what happens or the decisions I make, I choose to support myself with love. I deserve love. I deserve respect. When my self-love grows, my self-esteem follows. I love and accept every part of myself. Every part of me that makes me who I am is encompassed with love. Inhaling, sending gratitude to yourself for showing up today to open your heart space and truly be in the presence of self-love. Exhaling and feeling all of this love and acceptance for yourself that you've cultivated during this meditation. Remembering you can access it at any time. You just need your breath and an open heart. On your next breath in, begin to wiggle your fingers and wiggle your toes. Maybe rolling out your wrists and your ankles if that feels nice. And then bringing your hands to prayer or prana mudra in front of your heart center. Bowing your head if that feels safe. The divine light in me honors the divine light in you. Namaste. And there is no rush to come back to this moment. Take your time. stop the recording.